Hey, what's up guys? It's Cliff from Trail Grid Pro. Super pumped to be with you today. We're gonna to be putting in the Alpine ILX F509 plug and play bundle in my 2020 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. The purpose of today's video is gonna show you exactly how to disassemble your factory Toyota 4Runner head unit and then easily install the ILX F509 in your rig, in your garage. What's important to note, and the cool thing about Alpine is that the install is gonna be exactly the same whether you have the F507, which is the seven inch screen, the F509, which we're showing here today, which is the nine inch screen, or the F511, which is the 11 inch screen. They all have the same user interface feature set. So this is gonna be a comprehensive install regardless of the head unit bundle that you choose to purchase from us. Just like all of our other Toyota 4Runner plug and play bundles, you can choose from a silver dash kit or the charcoal dash kit, which matches the OEM look in your vehicle, or you can choose to switch it up. We've had lots of folks that have maybe an original silver dash kit that choose to go charcoal or even in the reverse. It's completely in your court, whichever one you wanna go with, just select it on the product page. If you haven't already checked out our in-depth review of the F509, the F507, and the F511 that we shot with Colin from Alpine, go ahead and check that out. That's gonna answer all your questions about how all of these parts and bundles integrate with each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that above, but in a quick summary about what that video contains is that all of these bundles are Maestro compatible, which means that all of your steering wheel controls, your factory backup camera are gonna be maintained. Also, any vehicle settings that you could control with your factory Toyota head unit will be retained as well. So you lose no factory capability with these bundles. You only gain form, function, and awesome technology. Some of the technological conveniences that you get with this kit are things like wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You also have the new Sirius XM 360L feature, which is the next generation of Sirius XM where you can actually listen to stations, programs on demand, which is fantastic. It also has the title app built into the interface, which gives you a high res playback of all of your music of your choice. One of the other great features of all of these Alpine bundles is that they have a HDMI input and output. So with the HDMI input, you can connect any HDMI compatible device such as a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick so you can stream video right on your device when stopped. And as far as the output, if you wanna project what's on your head unit, you can do that easily as well. One other quick thing that I wanted to go through before we actually get to the disassembly of the factory head unit is I'm gonna go through all of the wiring on the back of the bundle. And this is really the star of the show. Before your bundle is shipped, we're gonna handle all of the wiring for you. So when it comes to your door, everything is gonna be set up. All the wiring, soldering, Tessa taping, et cetera, is gonna be done so that you can just install it in your rig and call it an hour and a half in your garage. So let's go ahead and take this over to the other bench so I can go through what each of these connections are so that you can more easily install it in your rig. All right, guys, we're over here at the bench and we're gonna go through the wiring from left to right, and that's just the easiest way to do this so that we make sure we cover everything and don't have to jump from left to right. So starting on the left, what we have right here, there's a label on it that says Apple CarPlay, okay? The Apple CarPlay USB, which we have connected the USB adapter to for your specific vehicle. So the purpose of this is so that your factory USB can be used for charging and can be used for wired connection for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Alpine has added a second USB that's just for charging. Now this is the gray one right here. If you notice the black one is for your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, factory USB location, and the gray one is just for charging. Now our kits, the, the purpose of it is we want all your factory functionality to work as it did when you got it. So that's why we've decided to attach the factory USB retention cable to the Apple CarPlay Android Auto USB. But 
you can route this other USB to a different location just for charging, or if you don't want wired Apple CarPlay or Android Auto um, to be accessible using the USB under your head unit, you can remove this adapter and just plug it in here, and then your factory USB will just be used for charging. All right, next from left to right is the main harness that's associated with the kit which is coming right here out of the back of the radio. It winds kind of around this way and results in sort of this cluster of wires right here. Now I'm gonna focus on just these three connections here first. These are your main factory connectors if you have a 2020 plus Toyota 4Runner. If you have a 14 to 19 Toyota 4Runner, all of these connections will be white but they're going to be doing the same thing. They're also gonna look slightly different. They're gonna match your vehicle's connectors, not a 2020 plus vehicle that we're using today. So each of these will have a mate on the Toyota side, whether you have a 2014 to 2019 Toyota 4Runner or a 2020 plus. These Alpine head units and the Maestro compatibility, they can fulfill a lot of functions. So sometimes there's gonna be connectors with these kits that you won't need to use for your install. So when you see any connector with tape over it, like these two right here, these aren't connectors that you need to find mates for. So we do that on purpose so that you know those don't need to be plugged in. Now off the main connectors, there's gonna be a blue wire with a white stripe and I have it right here. You can sort of see the blue wire and the white stripe there. I have a bullet connector on the end of it, but the little tag here says amp turn on. That's your amp turn on wire. So if you have an aftermarket sub and amp combo, this is what you want to route to your amp so that the amp knows to turn on when you turn your factory head unit on. Now I have a bullet connector on here because I already have the wiring in my vehicle that runs back to an amplifier that has a female bullet connector on it. Now the last piece coming off this main harness are a red wire, yellow wire, and a black wire. And these all have female bullet connectors on them. And the purpose of these are so that if you wanted to add a dash cam down the road, the Alpine dash cam, this is where you're gonna get your power ground and accessory power and plug it right in so it'll have power at all times so that when you're stopped, if somebody hits your vehicle, you know, the, the camera will turn on and get the footage going on in front or behind you. Now, if you're buying these together, the head unit bundle and the dash cam bundle, we'll already have the dash cam pre-wired with male bullet connectors that you'll just plug into here. So totally plug and play for your power, ground, and accessory power. But if you're not getting the dash cam, you can just ignore these. Okay, continuing to come right up top here loaded, we have the Sirius XM module. So if you're retaining Sirius XM with your bundle, you can expect to see this on top of your, the rear of your radio kit. Now attached to this is the Sirius XM retention cable. So you're gonna have a cable in your vehicle that matches this specifically. It's gonna be a black plug that has a rounded top and a flat bottom, and it's gonna go right in here. And that's how you're gonna maintain your Sirius XM satellite connection from the factory. All right, next coming left to right, we've got the rear camera right here. So if you are maintaining your factory rear camera, you don't need to do anything here. It's already gonna be all plugged in, all part of your harness. As you can see here, this is plugged in here, all set up. Uh, it's just telling you that this is for the rear camera. Next, from left to right, we've got a front camera connection. If you wanna add the Alpine front camera to your bundle, this is all you have to do. You just mount it to the front of your vehicle, run the wire, uh, around the side of the engine bay, through the grommet and the firewall, run the wire up behind the head unit and plug it in here. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to worry about ground, power, it's all built into here, completely plug and play, which is fantastic. Next is the LIN connector. Now this is for your dash cam. If you've opted to get the Alpine dash cam, you'll just plug in the matching plug on the dash cam side that says LIN right into here. That's all you need to do there. And then lastly, to get your video feed from the dash cam, this is your RCA that you'll plug in right to here to get the video from your dash cam into the head unit. Right here, we've got the mic connection. So the Alpine mic, when you route it, you'll just plug it right into here. It's a 3.5 jack. 
So over here, you've got your antenna adapter. So this is where your factory antenna will plug in. If you have an aftermarket sub with your system, you can plug in the sub directly into the RCA left and right here. It's labeled sub W period. And then right here, we have rear out RCAs left and right. And then because my bundle is a JBL amplified, we route the speakers directly into the front out, which is why these are connected. But if you do not have a JBL amplified, this will not be connected and you'll have access to the front outs if you ever wanted to add amplified, front speakers, rear speakers, whatever you wanted to do. So those are all your connectors. Now, I know it looks like a lot back here, but if you follow the directions in this video and look at the labels, they're all very well labeled. You really can't go wrong. Now, if you're just getting the head unit bundle, all you're connecting is your factory USB, these connectors right here. Now, if you have a 14 to 19, these will all be white. You'll be connecting your antenna, which is right here. You'll be plugging in the microphone, and that's about it. Now, if you added Sirius XM, you'll be including that as well, but the base version of this is extremely simple. And if you want to expand the system, everything is labeled for you. Like I said, you really can't go wrong as long as you read the labels. And the other cool thing to remember is that if you did get the front camera or the rear camera or the dash cam, like I said, everything is labeled and they're keyed. So you can't put something in the wrong area. Um, and then just to recap, if there's any piece of this that for the install you don't need to use, we will cover them up like this, this, and this, but we won't be covering up the front camera, LIND, drive recorder in, because if you wanna use those somewhere down the road, we wanna leave those accessible to you. Now I've just flipped the bundle over because some of you may have been asking, hey, where's the Maestro module? We mount it on the bottom side of the head unit bundle. So if you ever need to get access to it, it's just Velcroed on here with a very heavy Velcro. You can pull it off at any time. We've made all the connections here it's all ready to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching this segment. Hopefully this cleared some things up. Now let's get over to the rig and put this in so that we can enjoy it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with this assembly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking off these side panels. You just grab the side and pull straight back. And we're gonna go ahead and store these on the floor. Your other panel, just go ahead and grab it, pull it right out. Okay, next we've got the HVAC column right here, which just grab the knobs here gently and just pull straight toward you, just like that. And there's gonna be just one connector here on the back, which we're gonna remove. That's it there. We can go ahead and store this on the floor as well. So under here we have four 10 millimeter bolts right underneath the head unit. And we're going to use a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket. You can use a manual socket wrench if that's all you have, but this is what we're going to use. Now a good place to store these is just put them in your cup holder. Okay, now that we have all the 10 millimeter bolts out, we can start by removing the head unit and you're gonna start on one side and just pull it straight toward you. Okay, so start it on that side and then do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now we have it started. Just have a microfiber towel handy like this. Just gonna stick it right on the shift knob so that we can rest the screen on it as we pull it out of position. Okay, so at this point, all we're gonna be doing is removing all of the plugs from the back of the factory head unit. A tip, use a small flathead screwdriver. It helps depress the tabs. Okay, we've got the entire factory head unit removed. We're ready for the next step where we're going to transfer some of the trim pieces, the trim piece on top. We're gonna to transfer the vents. So let's go over to the bench and we'll take care of that. 
All right, we've got the factory head unit over here on the bench. The first thing that we're going to do is remove these two Phillips head screws right here so we can take off this top trim piece. And then this top trim piece just pulls straight out toward you. Put that to the side. Next, we can remove the vents and we're going to start with the right vent. Now, there are tabs along each side of the vent. There's seven in total. So we're going to start on the right hand side of the vent and we're going to move this tab for you to show you what we're talking about. So we're going to push this tab to the side and as we do that we're going to be pulling gentle pressure where we go find the other tab and pull that to the side as well. Oop, you hear that snap already? It's coming out. So we're going to pull these other tabs. Might need a smaller screwdriver for this. So pull that tab to the side and then there's one back here too. Gentle pressure pulling up as we're doing this. There we go. There's your other vent. Now, same thing with this. Pull the tabs to the side. Gentle pressure up as you're doing this. Okay. There we go. It started to come. Now we can hit the ones on the other side. All right. There is our other vent now. We can flip the head unit over because we need to take out the hazard piece, which is right here on top. We can push it right from the back. And it pops right out. Guys, one more quick note before we transfer all the pieces to the new dash kit. This harness right here will be on the side of your factory head unit. This is the hazard harness. You need to remove this from your factory head unit. I've already removed it so many times that it's no longer connected. So just make sure you remove this because you'll need this for the install of the new bundle. All right, we've got everything off the factory dash kit that we need to move to the new dash cover. So let's get started with that. Okay, we've got the new dash cover here. Let's just go through a quick parts check to make sure we have everything we need. We have both the right and the left vents from the factory head unit. We have the top trim piece from the factory head unit. We have the hazard button from the factory head unit and then the two screws from the factory head unit that held the trim piece in place. This is the new dash kit that's gonna come with your bundle. And then with your bundle, we're gonna have new vent trim pieces, which will go right here on either side of the vents. And then here is a bag of extra screws and clips. We're gonna be mounting the clips already to the dash kit that you're gonna be using during the install. These are just extra clips in the event that you use them. And then your bundle will also come with a hazard surround. And this hazard surround will just push right in here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is open this bag right here. Okay, so here's the vent trim that we just removed from the bag. So let's go ahead and get these in position. There we go, and the other side. Now, we're gonna use screws from this bag to hold these into position, so let's go ahead and open this. Okay, we have our screws removed from the bag. Now, there are two sizes of screws in that bag. There are four screws that are a little shorter, two screws that are longer. We're looking for the four screws that are the same size and shorter than the others. So, let's go ahead and flip our dash cover over. And we're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver to start to get these screws into position. And as you're screwing these in, just hold the other side of the piece with your hand so that it doesn't pop off. That's good. So now let's put the top trim piece on. Okay, now we're gonna put in our screws on either side from that we actually removed from the factory head unit. those two pieces in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and we're gonna attach our vents. They just snap right into position. That looks good there. Now let's flip it over again. And we're gonna put in our hazard trim piece. Snaps right into position. 
put in our hazard button. Snaps right into position and we are done with the dash part swap and we're ready to go in the vehicle. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started with the assembly of your new Alpine plug and play head unit bundle in your Toyota 4Runner. So the first two things that you wanna consider are where we route the GPS antenna that's required for the Alpine bundles and then secondly, where you're gonna put your microphone. So I wanna walk you through real quick where I put the GPS antenna in my 4Runner and you can use that as a guide if you wanna place it there as well, but really it can go anywhere on the dash or up here on your windshield, wherever you're comfortable with putting the GPS antenna. All right, I've placed the GPS antenna just over here to the left of the steering column and just propped right up here. Here's the wire that's coming out of the GPS antenna. What I did was is I hit it using this panel tool right down here in between the dash and the A-pillar, and then actually just continued to hide it here behind the weather stripping. Just brought it all the way down here to the top of the kick panel, and then I brought it across underneath the steering column to back behind the head unit. Su super easy. If you want a pro tip on how to get the GPS antenna to behind the radio, just use a wire fish or an old coat hang hanger. If you just straighten it out, you can pull it through to behind the head unit. So that's all we did. Okay, so the second item is the microphone, and I tested lots of different places for the microphone. And I kind of like that the microphone is out of sight. I don't really see it, but it still has great functionality. All of my voice commands, everything like that worked great, phone calls, etc. I honestly placed it, you can see it, right down here on the side of the steering column. It's not in the way of anything and it's super easy to install it just sticks right on the side of the steering column i don't see it the wire heads right back behind here all i did same thing is used a push that to the floor used a wire fish back behind the head unit to the floor taped it on and pulled it through and then my mic uh, jack is ready to put into the new head unit so super simple those two things you'll want to do first um, but i think now it's time to progress with the installation all right so next step is the hazard piece that we pulled off the factory head unit, now is a good time to plug that in to the hazard piece here uh, behind the head unit and the dash opening. So let's just go ahead and plug that in so that it's ready when we're ready to put the new dash cover on. All right, so I've got the body of the bundle here in my hands. This is the exact way that it's gonna show up at your door. And I've got all the wiring back here, the front of the bundle here, and like we said previously, the installation for the seven inch screen, so the F507, the nine inch screen, which is the F509, and the 11 inch screen, the F511, are gonna be all the same. The only difference with these as we sort of progress through this is that if you have the seven inch, you don't have to put on the screen at the end. It's already attached here. The seven inch would just have a screen here, and that's the only difference. So let's keep going. All right, so let's go ahead and start making our connections. And remember these plugs are keyed, um, so they won't go in somewhere they're not supposed to. So we're gonna start first with this black connector right here. It's gonna plug right in, just like that. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you have a 2014 to 2019, the plugs will look slightly different, but it's the same idea. You're just looking for the mate. And this plug right here, there we go. And lastly, we've got one more white connector to make. Now, the connector that we want going in here, in this last one, is the factory connector with a large brown and light blue wire we want going in that last connector because that's for power. So let's go ahead and put that in. All right. So at this point, we've got our three main factory connectors plugged in. I know there's a lot going on here, but that's that's basically the the bulk of it is are those three connectors obviously more that we have to do but that that's the bulk of the install right there so we're going to find over here i have our antenna so we're going to plug in our factory antenna into our antenna adapter so let's find that it's actually right here 
This is the factory antenna. So let's go ahead and make that connection. So with our bundle, we are maintaining Sirius XM, and this is the adapter here. So right here, there are two adapters that will actually, or two plugs on the factory side that'll fit this. We're looking for the black one, okay? So you wanna plug in the black connector to here, that's your Sirius XM. So we've gone ahead and made that connection. If you're wondering what this is, this is your factory GPS connection. All right, next is the mic coming in from the back of the radio. And I've already routed the mic from right here on the side of the steering column to behind the head unit. And this is the mic connection, just like that. So that's done. And we need to do the factory USB retention. So I've got the factory USB retention cable connected to the Apple CarPlay Android Auto wired connection. So let's plug that in. It's a gray, here it is right here. This is from the Toyota side. It's a gray connector. So I've got that plugged in. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna plug in is the connector side of the GPS antenna that we showed you earlier, which is right here. And it's just gonna go into this gray port right there. So let's make that connection. That's gonna enable you to have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So that's plugged in. Now at this point, if you did a head unit upgrade, an Alpine head unit upgrade for your Toyota 4Runner, you're done. You're ready to install this back into the position that the factory head unit was in, but I'm gonna show you a cool few things that are coming down the pike. We don't have a full install video ready for them yet, but I've already installed a front camera and a rear camera. These are Alpine's front camera and rear camera and dash cam system. So I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek into how plug and play those integrate with the Alpine plug and play bundles we have. So let's make those connections. Okay, so I mounted a bird's eye rear camera, which I'm gonna show you, and I ran the wire from the rear to the front. All you're doing here, this is, this is the rear camera wire from the rear camera. This is the rear camera input that's going to be a part of your bundle. All you do is plug that in and your rear camera is connected. It's that easy. Don't have to run a separate power or ground. You just plug right into the head unit. And here are the front camera connections. This is the connection that I ran from the front of the vehicle to the new Alpine super sweet HD front camera. And then right here is the front camera connector from the back of the radio in our bundle. And again, just like the rear camera, we just plug it in and that connection is made. All right, so that's the front and rear camera connection. Those are fully functional now, just with two clicks of some connectors. Now let's run through again a sneak peek of how the dash cam system will be pre-wired for you. Next for your dash cam harness, we're gonna plug in power, ground, and accessories. So you're just matching colors here. So let's take the red from the dash cam harness, plug it into the red from our Alpine harness and then black to black. And then lastly, yellow to yellow. Next, we have the drive recorder in. We wanna take the yellow RCA from the dash cam harness, plug it right in. That's gonna give you video. All right, last connection we need to make for the dash cam, which is super crazy how easy it is, is this LIN that's coming from the Alpine bundle we plug that into, there's a plug here on the dash cam harness that says LIN as well. So we just make that connection and that's it. Now your Alpine dash cam is fully connected to your head unit for complete integration. So lastly, which is worth noting right here on the amp turn on wire, when you get your kit, there won't be a bullet connector on here. I have this on here because I have an aftermarket amp and sub combo already and I've connected this male bullet connector to the amp turn on wire because I have a female that I just use this to make my connection. You can do the same thing, obviously, if you have an aftermarket setup, um, but just wanted to walk through what that was so you didn't wonder what it was. All right, so now I've made all the factory connections you need to make. I did a quick walkthrough of what you can expect if you know, you right out of the gate, you want the dash cam bundle, front camera and or rear camera, you know what to do. Now at this point, I think it's important to know that it's okay that you didn't reuse all of your factory plugs. 
that's totally normal. We don't need to reuse all your factory connectors. Again, just focus on, based on this video and your specific installation guide, which connectors you're supposed to make for your bundle so that it'll be fully functional when you turn it on. So at this point, let's go ahead and get everything buttoned up and into place and we'll move on to the next step. So let's get the wires behind, but we wanna make sure we keep that hazard button on top. And you wanna kinda of tuck these back here. There are you know, a lot of wires, but basically we wire manage before we send the bundle out and you wanna make sure that you wire manage on your side before you put everything in and you'll be a-okay. Okay, now that we've got all the wires tucked down, now just a pro tip, behind the head unit, there's space directly behind it and then there's space down. So you wanna kinda of guide the wires back and then down and tuck them down a little bit at a time and then that way you'll create enough space back there so you can fit everything very well. So at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna secure the bundle with some of the 10 millimeter bolts that we put in the cup holder because we're gonna run through some tests. All right, so at this point, we're ready to run through our tests. A few things that you're gonna need for the test. One of them obviously being the screen for your F509 or F511. Obviously, if you have the F507, it's already right there. And if you have the F509 or the F511, you'll need this piece of plastic, which is called the power plate, believe it or not. And this piece is actually necessary for the entire head unit assembly to remain powered on, uh, which is interesting. So that's the power plate. And this is just the cover for the hinges of the screen. So for purposes of the test, we're just gonna attach the screen now. And this just fits right into position and it'll snap into place. You'll hear it, it snaps. Okay. And the cool thing about Alpine is you can actually tilt this screen forward just like that. So you gain access. Okay. There are four screws which hold the screen to the body. And actually I'm just going to put in a couple here just to hold it in place while we do our tests. All right. So those will just hold the screen in place while we do our tests. Let's put our power plate on is just this small plastic piece right here and then the cover here which covers up all the hinges and also is going to keep our power plate in, in place so let's grab the smaller screws to hold in the power plate All right, we have the screen mounted here for some tests. So let's go ahead and put the vehicle in accessory power. Woo, there it is starting up Alpine Emotion in Mobility, HD radio, Sirius XM ready. Continuous recording will now start. That's the dash cam. I didn't install the, dash, the rear dash cam. That's the dash cam telling us that it's activated. Like I said and showed, uh, I connected the dash cam to the head unit. So we are fully start up here just some of the functions i want to make sure work we're in a shop here and don't have great reception but i want to make sure that volume functionality works there my steering wheel controls work i'm going through radio stations here i don't know if you can see this in the corner i'll pop in here so it's a little bit bigger uh, so going through radio stations here works from the steering wheel controls let's go back to the main screen here all right, one thing that you're gonna to wanna to do during this testing phase is you wanna set up your rear camera. There's just a simple setting that we have to go into in the function area of the settings under camera. So you're gonna to wanna to mark reverse camera as on. The reverse camera format is fine here as NTSC. Camera two, I've got a front camera. I've already talked through that. So we wanna turn that on and we wanna let it know that it's a front camera and the camera format there is good as well. Okay, now that we have the cameras activated, let's go ahead and give them a test. So we'll go ahead and start up the vehicle real quick. All right, so put the vehicle in reverse. There we go, there's my reverse camera. Now, just to remind you, I have a bird's eye reverse camera, the Alpine reverse camera that I've placed uh, up top. 
and it gives a sort of top-down view, so that is working. If this was your factory backup camera, it would do the same thing just from the factory position. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back and test now just by a push of a button. In this camera button, we've got the rear cam, and now we've got the front cam there. There's the rest of the shop there. You can remove the grids here, but we've got push button, front and rear cam, which is super awesome. So we've got the functionality that we need at this point, steering wheel controls, camera functionality. So let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the install and button everything up. So let's go ahead and tilt the screen down, which is one of the great features about the Alpine head units. And we'll just go ahead and... That's the dash camera telling me it's powering down. So let's go ahead and just remove the screws, keep them there in the cup holder. Remove the cover here and the power plate. And then next, if you remember, we put a couple screws in here. Not all of them, it has four screws, but we just used two to hold the screen in place. So let's just remove those as well. And you definitely wanna use a magnetized screwdriver set with this. All right, so we've gone ahead and removed the screen. Put that aside. Okay, now that we have the screen off, one thing to note is you wanna keep the hazard connector up top here free because when we put the dash cover on, you're gonna connect this into the hazard button so that it'll function. So at this point, we didn't really screw down our 10 millimeter bolts all the way, so let's go ahead and do that so it can be nice and secure and in position. Okay, now we're ready to put the dash cover on. And as I mentioned, you wanna keep the hazard button free up here. So we're gonna plug it right into the hazard button that's right behind the hazard button. So it's kinda of hard to miss. And we're gonna drop this right into position. And kinda of just gently put it into, you'll be able to feel it go into the position that it's intended to go. Okay, so we've got the dash kit all nice and into position. So at this point, we're going to reassemble our HVAC assembly. So let's go ahead and make the connection to the back here. That's just one connection. If you forget to do that, it won't work. <laughs> so definitely wanna make sure you do that. There we go. Looks good. And we've got our side panels. So we'll start here on the left. Just snaps right in. Okay, so we've got that in there. Now it's time to throw our screen back on. All right, so now we're gonna do for the full install of the screen. That just pops right into position. Again, there's two tabs on top that sort of hold it in place for you, which is great. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the screws on the top, securing the screen to the body. There are these flat top screws, and they also have a flat bottom. So hopefully you can see that. So I'm just gonna get those right into position. Okay, so there are two holes on either side that we're gonna put these screws in. There's two on this side, one in the back, one in the front, and then same thing one in the back, one in the front on this side. So that, that's where our screws are gonna go. So here's the first one. I'm gonna start them all for you so you can see. There's one. There's the other. Here's the third. And the fourth. All right, so there are your four screws Two on the right, two on the left. Now I'm gonna hammer these down. Okay, so now we have the four screws set. Next is our power plate. And again, this is the, again, just small strip of plastic goes into those two holes right there in the front. And then next is the cover piece here, which just goes over the power plate. There we go. And then we're gonna put in screws right here, the last two small screws we have. 
So first screw right here. There we go. There we go, gets that in. And then the second screw right there. We've got all that done. Let's go ahead and tilt our screen up. Boom. All right, so we've got that screen in position. This thing is super slick. This is the screen size for this Toyota 4Runner. This nine inch screen fits perfect. From the view from behind me over my shoulder, I know you can see that the entire vents are in view. There is no vent blockage whatsoever, yet I've got a giant nine inch screen right here that we're gonna turn on in a minute, but I just wanted to show you, we had a lot of questions about that. I've got no vents blocked whatsoever. Now, the thing to keep in mind, even if vents were slightly blocked, none of that air actually leaves the vehicle. It just does, of course, not go in the direction it was intended, whether it's at you, toward the rear of the vehicle. But in this case, all of the vent flow will go where it's intended, at your face or at the passenger to keep you cool or warm in the most extreme temperatures, whether, like I said, cold or super hot. We got guys and gals that live in Arizona ask us questions about some of these bundles. Well, hey, guess what? The air conditioning is come right at your face in the middle of summer, so that's great. Okay, so we just went over the screen placement. It's awesome, doesn't cover the vents at all. Nice big nine inch screen. The other cool thing about Alpine, and we kind of already showed this, is that you can tilt you know, the screen down and there, you actually have use of the cubby that's back here. So you can store things in there, whatever you wanna do, that's at your disposal as well. But let's go ahead and put this back into position. All right, so let's go ahead and start this baby up. There we go, Alpine, Emotion in Mobility, HD radio, Sirius XM ready, boom. All right, so this is the Alpine main screen. So on here we've got vehicle info, that's for your gauges phone here's the setup to get into the settings this is the title app that we talked about when i was with colin that you want to use if you want that really high res music uh, you'll go right in there of course bluetooth auxiliary We've got of course radio usb thumb drive if you want to stick something into the factory usb location hdmi and then of course the sirius xm with 360l that colin and i talked about in our Alpine talk. So we've got everything there. So probably one of the most important things that we want to do right out of the gate is we want to set up uh, our Apple CarPlay and this will be ring the same true for Android Auto. So let's go into the device list here and we're going to click add a device. Go into Bluetooth here. All right, there's Cliff John's iPhone. Let's go ahead and click that. Connecting to device. Five eight two one three four five eight two one three four. Yes, and pair. Allow. Connecting to device. Yep. Yep. Use CarPlay. All right, boom. There's CarPlay here. So, just a few quick things that. I always like to do when we get right into CarPlay are, are just a few aesthetic settings. So let's go into settings here. And I'm gonna change the wallpaper to, you now there's obviously lots of things that you can do. I just like it as all black. I think it's super slick, so let's go ahead and do that. There you go. So it's a nice, just crisp background there. Now, of course, you got all the things that you would expect here in Apple CarPlay, your phone, music, messages, Here's the Alpine app right here. And really what that does is that just brings you right back to the Alpine title screen so you can get to anything, settings, any other place that you wanna be. If we wanna go back into CarPlay, just go right back here. So everything you'd expect is right in here. Any apps that you have downloaded to your phone that are Apple CarPlay compatible, any music apps or navigation apps will all be here uh, at your disposal. So everything is there and looking good. All right, one of the cool features that I wanted to show you was the integration of the dash cam, which we've mounted right up here, obviously on the, uh, the front windshield. Now, just at a click of a button, I can view the front dash cam right here and uh, see exactly what's the frame of view in front of me if I want to verify you know, what I'm seeing. Um, you can also go to 
a menu within the head unit that will enable you to watch what, say I've got live view, the memory settings, other settings, so I can see the file list, so I can see the continuous recording here. Here's all the different files that I can actually play. <laughs> There's the play right there. There's Danny walking out of frame right there. That was the last recording that we had while we were sitting here. And let's go back a little bit, see if we can see maybe some drives. All right, so here's a, a drive. Looks like that's from a couple days ago. This is when I was stopped. That's my son on his bike. <laughs> we were bike riding. So it was recording the front of the camera while we were uh, just getting back from bike riding. Let's take it. Here's another one driving down the street. So that you can view the dash cam at any time, all the files from uh, what was saved on the memory card, which is awesome. So that's just a cool feature there. Uh, the integration is awesome. So let's go back to the main screen. And the other thing is with a click of a button, like I said, you can view the rear cam. The grids can be removed if you want to and the front cam that I've mounted. Again, just notice how clear that is. This front camera is super clear. It's amazing. And the integration of all of this together is why we are Team Alpine. We are super pumped about this lineup for Forerunners, Tacomas, Tundras, but man, this is a beauty in this Toyota Forerunner. This nine inch screen looks super slick. It's just perfect. So the purpose of this setup is just to get you through the basic setup of the Alpine head units, but there are some advanced setup features that we're gonna do a whole different video on for you guys so we can show you exactly how you wanna really dial in your Alpine head unit. So look out for that. And then the other thing that you can look forward to is a comprehensive install of the dash cam, which again is already up here, and the front and rear camera that integrate with this head unit so that you can easily install those as well. We're gonna have those for sale right when these bundles come out so you can add it right out of the gate. But if you're looking for a step-by-step -step install video for those, they'll be coming very soon. All right guys, well that about wraps this up for today. We thank you so much for watching. These Alpine bundles are gonna be super sweet. So go ahead and head on over to the Trail Grid Pro shop at www.trailgridpro.com and pick up your new Alpine plug and play head unit bundle for your Toyota 4Runner. And as always guys, have a blast out there.